Hey everyone, it's Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I'm back with another video for you today and I'm at Santa Maria Novella in Florence, Italy. And I've got a great video for you today with the one of the leaders of this uh, perfume house, Gianluca. He's going to show us all around, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes of this very historic perfumery. This is a fragrance house that was started back in 1612 and it's been around since then and there's a lot of great fragrances here as well as as well as um, skincare products and many many more things. It used to be a pharmacy before but now they have an excellent collection of very easy to wear fragrances in many different styles. They also have a tea room here so if you ever make it to Florence, Italy you can come and visit and stock up in some of their fragrances and of course have some teas or have some tea and learn a lot about the history of this wonderful place. So sit back and enjoy this video with Gianluca explaining Santa Maria Novella for us. Thank you. called to take care of the outcasts which were, who were tenting on the banks of the river Arno were called to take care of them. They were affected by pathologies and the monastic orders faithful to, to the charity ideals were called to take care of them. So they established a little church called Santa Maria in the Vineyards because the city of, uh, center was smaller than today and it's supposed to be all countryside around here. They start to prepare some ointment, pomades, uh, soaps just to heal these people from their pathologies. The uh, lifestyle wasn't so high, uh, there was a lot of microbic uh, illness, etc. Et so they tried in something that we can recognize uh, the first attempt of chemistry and alchemy to make something to make something for them. We can see two main facts that changed the history, the course of the history of this pharmacy. The first one was whenever the plague affected Europe. Uh, imagine that in 1348, when Florence counted 100,000 people, there was the big epidemic, uh, the first big epidemic of plague, which reduced the population to 30,000 people at the end of the century. So uh, more than two thirds were killed uh, by this uh, pathology. And the monks tried to fight the, the Morbus, uh, watching the nature, taking inspiration from example the rose. Uh, they distilled the rose petals because the rose defends itself by the bites of the insects uh, creating something so they believed that um, distilling the petals could create an antiseptic against the plague of force. It didn't work but today we are still selling our rose water which is a great tonic for the skin. If you want to see that this, this kind of product that we are still selling Today is called vinegar of the 70s, but was renowned as uh, um, uh, to, uh, aromatic vinegar. But was renowned as vegan vinegar of the 70s because it said the legend, the legend said that uh, each thieves detain a part of the recipe, and just being all together could recreate the, for the formulation, which made them immune to get the plague. So they couldn't trick each other going afterwards immune to make robberies in the house of the people affected by plague. The other fact that changed the course of the pharmacy was in 1533, as soon as Caterina de' Medici, belonging to the most powerful family at the time in Florence, just 14 years old, was promised uh, and married only uh, the second king of France, Elie de Valois. She was the best sponsor of the uh, Tuscan products, let's say, and brought to the French court some uh, customs, habits and products. Among those, uh, she committed the monks to create uh, a perfume to celebrate the occasion. And the monks had the intuition to use for the first time in the history uh, the alcohol to melt the essential oils and the water. Before the, it was used the almond oil, uh, vinegars or olive oil. But after that uh, one day, two days, the skin remained greasy, oily and rancid. So the smell wasn't so good. This was something that changed the way to create the perfume. They called this perfume Eau de la Reine, Water of the Queen. 
uh, and the French were used to pour themselves to cover the smell of the body and were really excited to see that after a while the, the skin remained fragrant and dry rather than greasy and oily. So the fame of the company spread as far as France and in 1612 the monks decided to open this room through the, that door to the public. So we can say that the company we, they decided to open this place with the name of Officina Profumo Farmaceutica di Santa Novella, writing before the name of perfumery than the drugs, the pharmaceutical, because they understood that the business was in there rather than in other things. Meanwhile, a big convent grew up around the, the little church that changed the name in Santa Maria Nuova. Santa Maria Novella means new, the new in Italian. And the people had to get through the convent until uh, to arrive in here and made the purchases. So this place was quite renowned, not just spiritual wise, but also from the political point of view, because that, uh, the, the first floor just opposite to us uh, hosted the Pope whenever he, he, he was coming to Florence. And in the, the corner just there, there was one studio of Leonardo da Vinci. Meanwhile, he was committed to paint the, the famous Battaglia de Anghiari, the paintings that is supposed to be hidden in the Palazzo Vecchio, in the Salone de Cinquecento, just behind the Vasari fresco. So we can say that it's uh, over, it's just like 406 years of uninterrupted activity, which makes this place and the company one of the oldest in the world having a, a, a worldwide network. But we are not a museum, of course. We have to compete in the international markets and our philosophy is to focus everything on the quality of the product. So we don't advertise, we don't spend one cent in, uh, in publicity, but we just reinvest our profit in raw materials, skilled people, technology. This is our historical place. The, we were producing here, as we will see in a while, until 2000. Then we moved to uh, modern facilities that we purchased uh, at that time. We are now doubling the size of the production size. We want to maintain the grow, an organic growth. So we, uh, we are very selective, don't want to spread the products worldwide to everybody who, who is asking us the product, but selecting the retailer. That's why we don't have distributors. We are just choosing and picking every single retailer one by one. Myself and the president of the company, Mr. Eugenio Fanderi, are uh, traveling worldwide just to meet personally the people that is going to represent us because we are just giving to them not the products, but a philosophy, a legacy. So they have to talk, the training are done in here, uh, it's mandatory before uh, selling the product. Here you can see a selection of uh, products that uh, just go to, to the roots of the monastic orders, like the dietary supplements, in, uh, the ancient preparation. This is an iconic product that was called anti-hysterical water, uh, distilled since the 600s, now renowned, and now we call it like Elisir Aqua Santa Maria Novella and calm down the nerves as uh, calming properties. Or the liqueurs that are uh, seeing a new life as ingredient of cocktail because of the fashion of the mixologist. Uh, our most famous liqueur is the al Kermes, uh, which comes from an Arabic word which uh, al kir means the red, the scarlet, because of this beautiful color given by the cochinilla, the ladybugs. Um, it was given to, before, uh, the use of drugs were, was given to the ladies after they gave birth to calm down the delivery pains. Or this one uh, is not Elisir of China, but Elisir of Kina, coming from the Kon China tree. The print active principle is the quinine and uh, was given to people affected by malaria or high fevers. Today it's a great digestive even drunk hot after a good ski, etc., etc. We are now in the room that tells a little bit about the history of our pharmacy. Uh, since 1612, the first director of the monks that decided to open the pharmacy to the public, until the last one, Fra Damiano Beni, in 1869. Why the friars decided to give 
the company to the layman because they were forced to do it by the new state. Italy, Italy was finally unified as a state for the first time in 1861 and the government decided to fight the, uh, the biggest enemy at the, at the point, the, the most powerful, which was the church. So they forced the church to alienate their properties to the state. That's why since uh, 1869 the city of Florence is the owner, is the landlord of this place. We are under long-term lease agreement and uh, the company was given to Cesar Augusto Stefani, the nephew of Fra Damiano Beni and today the, the family, the Stefani family is still in the property of the company represented by Diana Stefani with a minority well, the majority is um, uh, represented by Eugenio Alfanderi, a mechanical engineer that 30 years ago was called by Mrs. Stefani uh, to repair uh, a machinery which were producing some pastilles that we produced. And uh, he realized that the company was just failing, one uh, store and two employees, and realized that another treasure of Florence would have been lost forever. So he decided to leave the textile business. His family uh, ran a textile business since years, uh, since, uh, I must say, hundreds of years and uh, was totally committed in making this company a benchmark. After 30 years, we even say we are a benchmark in the niche uh, cosmetic world, taking the inspiration from what the, 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 the monks did, but investing a lot in research, in quality, etc. So he was always able to maintain the average, the balance between the tradition of the monks and the innovation that the company that want to compete in the international market uh, against giants of multinationals and super luxury group. The two crests that you see uh, shows the uh, symbol of the Dominican order. As you know, the friar says a, a, a white vest with a black cap. The black is for the penalty, the white is for the purity. The star uh, symbolizes the uh, uh, founder of the order, San Domenico, and the sun is the face of Jesus Christ. On the other side, the crest shows St. Peter's Martyr with a knife on the head because it was created. Uh, with the six balls of the Medici family, the blue one means that the French Empire is supporting the activity of the pharmacy. And all around you can see the uh, Esculapius snake, the medicine snake. Uh, in this room we sell uh, the room fragrances. Uh, the best seller for us is the potpourri. This one which is a mixture of berries, leaves, and uh, whatever we found in uh, flowers in the Florentine hills that we leave to macerate with their essential oil for a while and then we sell uh, just one kind of that in this kind of uh, packaging. For this one it's quite curious, the Armenian paper is one of the oldest uh, perfumes for the rooms. It's a paper deep in the benzoin uh, resin that can be used uh, as uh, like the incense, uh, burning it or uh, personally, I used to mark the page of the book, or it can be put in the drawers to perfume the shirts and the t-shirts, etc. Et Benzoin is original from the Armenia. Oh, really? That's why they were used. They were they, the Armenian uh, people uh, was used to perfume their uh, okay. houses like, with this one. Oh, wow. oh. So the monks decided in 1848 to move the main sale room from the place where we were before to here because they need a bigger environment, a bigger place to uh, guest, to host the, the, the clients. And they were very smart because they opened a direct access, access to the city. And this has increased a lot the sales because they, they, the people had to uh, get through the convent to arrive at the store, but they could access directly from the city, from Via della Scala. Uh, it's uh, our business card to the world, everybody knows this place. Um, you can see the neo-gothic original furniture and our main line, which are the skincare, uh, the soaps, and uh, especially Asians love to come here because we have developed so much our presence in Asia, especially uh, South Korea. I start with the owner of the company. We were in South Korea for the first time in 2009 and nowadays we count 24 stores up there. Or in, uh, in uh, Japan, we have 15 doors. Uh, then we have Taiwan, Indonesia, etc., etc. So Asia is really a great market for us and where the people is more careful 
to the to the cosmetics, to the skincare. So it's very stimulating for, for us to do better and better and to develop new lines, etc. Very soon we will launch new skincare products. Just thinking to our customers that are becoming, and it's good for us. It's not a, uh, so bad. More and more demanding. They want something that lasts as long as we can the life of the skin in a better way, more elastic, etc. etc. We are now in the sacristy of the uh, pharmacy uh, where we can see beautiful frescoes painted by Mariotto Di Nardo. He, uh, he began to uh, paint these frescoes in uh, 1381 to finish them in 1402. Uh, unfortunately, the frescoes is a, a painting technique, is the most delicate because these are uh, uh, color in the water and once they were ruined by some patinas or uh, molds, uh, the only chance was to destroy them and paint it over, as you can see from here, here, etc. But in uh, 1966, Florence unfortunately suffered of uh, terrible floods. The Arno River, uh, periodically during the century, uh, comes out of the banks, etc., and flood the city. And that time, the, the devastation was incredible. This was one of the luckiest places in the city. And the river broke this window, and the water arrived up to here. And you can still see the sign of the water here. The priority were elsewhere. So uh, this place be became a pool for like for weeks. Um, and this affected the frescoes terribly uh, because the, some white patina appear and molds, etc. Et but at that time, uh, Professor Dini, who was a really good chemist, created a formulation that was able to save and to catch up the uh, frescoes in San Marco, painted by Beato Angelico, another masterpiece that we have here in Florence. And we commit the daughter of him from 2010 to 2012 to restore these frescoes uh, using the same technique made of patches of uh, ammonium. So she was able, piece by piece, little piece by piece, to restore uh, everything and to give back beautiful colors designed over 700 years ago to the city of Florence. They show the, the life of Jesus Christ, especially the Last Supper is quite unique because you can see them uh, all around the round table rather than to be like, the, you know, it's iconic to see them uh, sit uh, along uh, a, a long table, not like that. We would like to set up a bibliotheque wherever uh, the clients can come and uh, read the books. Uh, this is a place we don't care if they purchase or purchase. This is a place to be busy. For us, it's very important that the people come here and see another place that this amazing city can give to them. So uh, we really don't care. Uh, we are not really careful of the purchase, etc. Then for, uh, we are lucky that our products are so much appreciated, so we, 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 we work with them, etc. But it's not necessary for us, so anybody can come and enjoy the place. We decided to set up a tea room because we thought that it was nice to offer to our clients a place where they can sit and get something and relax and maybe also have some business meeting, who knows, etc. You can find in this show, uh, between some products of the past. Uh, so the packaging of hundreds of years ago, etc., or even uh, in recent times, uh, testify that we always get the inspiration because our packaging, our vintage packaging, reflects what uh, it's the philosophy of the company. So these machinery were, were used until 2000. Uh, today they are part of our museum, they are perfectly working. This, for example, is the soap line. The first step is to put the soft flakes, the fragrance and the milk when, uh, in this machinery. Then it goes through everything and arrives up to this cutter that was cutting the, bar the, the bars in pieces. Uh, this is quite unique, it's something that I have to explain to you. This is the uh, roots of the Florentine iris. The Florentine iris is one of the most expensive products in uh, perfumery uh, because the way we extract the absolute from these flowers, uh, the flowers come from the roots, not from the petals. And 
for a strange reason, the Florentine Aries had the double of particles called Ironi uh, that produce perfume respect to all the other Aries were, um, um, growing up elsewhere. That's why we say, nobody knows, but it's a fairy tale, that Chianti wine is so good because it takes the aftertaste from the roots of the Aries sometimes because they are, we, we, we just get our place to cultivate it's in uh, Chianti, these, these Aries that are very, he made it's amazing to go there and see this beautiful blue plantation, etc., etc. It costs so much because the process to extract the absolute is so long, it takes three years because for three years the, the roots have to stay underground and create a sort of mold. After a while they have to be dried for a couple of weeks uh, outside and then peeled off one by one with a, with a special knife by hand, one by one by hand. Then they were crushed with this machinery and reduced to a powder. now we have modern machineries. And uh, uh, this padware is used, we use the padware uh, to create masks, etc., etc., or it's uh, compacted in a concrete, in a butter, that through solvents we extract the absolute, the, the absolute uh, of the iris. From one ton of roots we get one liter, one liter maximum, uh, one liter and a half maximum of absolute, which cost uh, like $30,000 for liter, so, uh, or euros. It's very, very expensive, but this is our choice. We prefer to invest in that rather than in advertising because the client today are really mature. They appreciate the quality of the product. And that's why we are, I must say, winning in international markets and we are uh, making the company bigger and bigger, opening new markets, etc., etc. This is a multifractionary distillator. It's quite rare, uh, used in the 700s. With just one fire, the monks were able, so smart, to distill uh, like 20, 25 different plants or flowers. So the column of vapor were, was able to melt the flowers that were in this cup, etc., and creating the absolute. It's quite smart. This one were used to press the soaps after the uh, production and to put the trademark and the name of the company. Here you have two distillators used to uh, uh, distill the liquors. Uh, there were 12 once, but now we have just preserved two to show to our uh, client, to the press, etc., fed by the wood. So the horse couches were coming from Piazza Santa Maria Novella, which is there, to carry the wood that was uh, needed to feed this oven. And there, uh, my oldest colleague, 25 years ago, we were still mixing the cream by hand. Now we have turbo emulsion machinery in a modern uh, laboratory, in a modern production factory. But once they were, in a, it's very difficult to mix a cream and the ingredient by hand because they tend to separate after a while. So you have to have a turbo emulsion machinery and emulsionant to create the right textures, as we call the right compound of the cream. After the distillation, everything was left to dry in this uh, courtyard and burned in this big camino. So nothing remained after the, uh, uh, the distillation, no garbage. Uh, here we have something very special. It's our barber shop by invitation, by appointment only. So whenever some five-star hotels has good clients that want to have a personal service, we call by appointment our uh, barber with the black, etc. So make the, the shavings uh, in this place. So the, we got this uh, chair in Catania, Sicily, because the tradition of the shavings comes from the south of Italy. And it's a snuggle for our men, you know, it's a couple. I mean, it's, uh, it's nice to have it. Here you can see what it was called Ortus Conclusus. It was the garden where the monks, one of the garden where the monks cultivated their plantation that they use in their preparation. It's a little one. Today it's uh, still managed by the city of Florence. We hope that soon they will release, they will give to us so we can create a little example of the plantation that we have in Florence and in San Carlo where we cultivate our, uh, our plants. Because our um, characteristic as a company is that we go from the plants up to the finished product. So we just do everything by ourselves. We cultivate the plants, we distill them, we produce the products in one factory and then we sell. So it's quite unique for the uh, cosmetic world to have a company that do 
everything by itself. We are now in our pottery museum, historical pottery museum. These vases were used in the 16th and 17th century to stock the aromatic waters, so rose water, uh, orange flower waters, etc., or some ingredients. So the monks, uh, according with the content, were writing on the white label what was inside and then they cancel, depending from what was inside. These are unique pieces. Uh, no other pieces are existing from the area, so they are asked to be in some expo or exhibition worldwide. So using all the care, we sometimes ship them to, for example, Tokyo, we send to... This is an alchemic book written by hand by the, by the monks. This chapter deals of secret against the plague. It's quite funny to read it because you can find what everything inside. So whatever you think of the alchemy is in there. So how to transform the gold in something and, the, and the using the blood of the bats. Uh, mixed to the, some, uh, it's better don't talk, but it's, uh, it's something very, but was very, very popular at the time. So the people followed those recipes to, uh, to fix uh, their pathologies. Here we have uh, uh, something that was, and is still very important in making the perfumery. This changed the way to make the perfumes. It's the Florentine bottle, designed at the beginning of the 500s by Leonardo da Vinci, and we didn't find anything better until now. Imagine how much was genial this man, because at the end of the distillation process, when the vapor gets through the uh, serpentine, precipitates in this uh, bottle in, uh, as a liquid. So the essential oil that are lighter goes up into this long neck, meanwhile the water gets out from the swirl neck. So what remain in the bottle are just the essential oil, the absolute of the flowers. And we are still using this bottle to separate the uh, essential oil from the water. Another remarkable uh, thing of the past is this book called Herbario. Uh, this book lists all the plants renowned at the time. This book commit uh, so much the monks because there were times of new discoveries. The Italian, Portuguese, Spanish, French were always discovering new lands. And whenever they came back from the discoveries, they brought some plants uh, with them. So uh, the monks had to update every time the book, adding potatoes, tomatoes, aloe, whatever was coming from uh, new lands. We are in the office of the director of the monks. He could control from this window the workshop of the play uh, the, the monks were doing in uh, the first room where we start the visit up there. Uh, the director had a beautiful view on the main cluster through this balcony. So you can see the main cluster, Santa Maria Novella from here. Previously it was an army school, now it's open to the public. Probably it will become a museum. We hope it uh, will talk of art. It will keep going on talking of art. As you can see under the columnade, there are beautiful fresco all around the cloister. In the first floor, the Pope Apartments had a beautiful room, which is called Spanish room, used by diners. The diners every year organize a dinner for uh, the best hundred private customers of the, of the organization, and they choose the best places in the world. And two years ago, they chose, they chose the, the, that place. So at the end of the dinner, the customers go through the main cluster, through the door, that it's in our ancient pharmacy, and uh, pass through the pharmacy until the exit on the other Scala. So they had the privilege to make uh, an unusual tour because nobody is allowed now to do that. We are now in the bedroom of the monks, uh, of the director of the monks. Today it's our showroom, it's our place where we do the training to all the same stuff in the world. Whoever decide to open the flagship store or a multi-brand store, open a corner in a multi-brand store, 
must comply with some requirements that we always ask and uh, the main one is to train them in Florence. They have to come despite they are in New Zealand, Australia, they have to stay with us for two, three days to be trained. Even the ones, uh, because we have a line of professional treatments for spas, even the therapists that work in Five Star Hotel, they come here and they stay with us to not just understand the product and learn about the products. With us there is something more. They have to breathe the history. They, I, I just tell breathe because it's not to learn. You, they have to stay in Florence and really feel the atmosphere that is around this brand. Because throughout the history of the brand, the, it's just uh, collateral to the story of the city. So, uh, especially with the Asians and Americans that lie and love the stories, they have to tell the story of this company. This is our main value. And we really want that they are able to represent us at the best. It's also used for celebrities. Sometimes they come and want to purchase the, our products uh, with privacy, etc. Uh, usually not. I must say, usually they are very nice and they go there, etc. Usually our clients are people really educated. Uh, our typical client is rather, it's more educated than rich. Then luckily we have also wealthy customers, but uh, who likes this brand is really educated. By the way, in, the, in these rooms, uh, step, uh, Nicole Kidman uh, shooting um, Portrait of a Lady. I don't know if you've ever seen, so she was here. Here you see our meeting room, one of our meetings room. We usually uh, do dinners whenever we want to stay uh, with some privacy rather than to go in the restaurants. So we receive special clients and we have dinner with Catherine here. From here you can see a beautiful view of the main room. Uh, the same view that you can see in the movie Hannibal when Anthony Hopkins is there purchasing products of Santa Maria Vella. Last thing to say is that we have purchased in 2015 a mineral water company, uh, Tuscan uh, Water, which, is, uh, uh, which springs in the Alpiapuane, in Massa, and it's one of the purest water in the world because it's renowned since the Roman time, it's bottled and filtered, and we are going to open, uh, beginning of 2019, a spa of 700 square meters. So Santa Maria Novella will become, with San Carlo, this is the name of the, of the water and the place, will become a concept of lifestyle rather than to be a producer of product, of cosmetic. So we want really to give our word to the customers, to the hotels, to whoever approach us in a way. So my tour is finished, whatever you have to ask. How many stores are there worldwide? 77. In the USA? Five. 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 California? One. LA, LA. Uh, in Merrill's Place. Okay. A, a road when at the beginning when we opened was quite unknown. Now it's one of the most fashionable road in LA. So close, really in Beverly Hills, it's, it's amazing, okay. it's great. What are the most popular fragrances from your collection? It's very easy to, to, to reply to this question, the classical one, Caterina de' Medici, the one that was made in 1533, Water of the Queen, that we still sell as classical cologne. So our range of colognes, of perfume, just it's uh, in uh, one category, which is the eau de cologne. We don't have, despite the concentration of the uh, absolute uh, change from 4 to 15%, we don't care. All of them are called Eau de Cologne, except one, which is the uh, classical Cologne, the Water of the Queen, because the monks commit, the, uh, the, the Caterina de' Medici commit the monks to create a perfume. And at that time, Eau de Cologne were unexisting. So that's why, despite it's quite light, because it's citrus, the, the monks use the bergamot, the rosemary, whatever they found in the gardens. Despite the concentration is not so high, we uh, have the title to call it perfume. Even if technically it's not a perfume. But now we are uh, going to open a, a, a great store in uh, Abu Dhabi. So according with the taste of the uh, Middle East men and uh, women, we are doing more strong and uh, fragrances. Makes sense. <laughs> At least a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. This wonderful video highlighting Santa Maria Novella in Florence, Italy. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. 
Otherwise, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.